in your engineering math books, calculus, linear algebra, etc., you will find axioms, definitions, and theorems. Those may look the same to you. So, what is the difference? Which ones do you need to learn by heart as an engineer? These subjects touch on the foundation of mathematics. Maybe not of primary interest to you, so we will not, not dive too deep into this. But in order to read and understand your own textbooks, it's important to know at least what is meant with each of these concepts and what the difference is. Let us look at the axioms first. Well, an axiom is a statement that is so obvious, so evident, that it is accepted without question. So, an example of axiom, an example is, for every two points A and B, there exists a line that contains both of them. It seems pretty obvious, I guess. So, there are only a very few axioms because they are accepted by all of the community, all of the full mathematics community. So there are quite a few of those. As an engineer, they are so obvious that you just have to recognize it. So you see in your textbook somewhere an axiom, and as you feel, okay, that's obvious. So there's no real need to learn those by heart because they are so obvious that there is no problem over there. For, so with the axioms, you probably won't encounter too many problems. Let me go to the next. The definition. A definition gives the meaning of a new term. So when we introduce in our textbook a new term, it comes with a definition which exactly tells what this new term means. And that is something you often do need to learn what it means. Because there it's often not so obvious what we exactly mean by this new term. And it gives the precise meaning of a new term. It's a very precise formulation. For definitions, not everyone throughout the whole community might agree on the precise definition. There are some cho choices here which can be made. Within a textbook, of course, one choice is made, but it can differ between different textbooks. They all boil down to the same concept, of course, they are not entirely different, but there is some room here in the definitions. It's wise to study those definitions very well, to understand very well what they mean. I took an easy one here as an example. A prime number, I encountered them on primary school already, is a natural number greater than 1. We don't want 1 here, so natural number greater than 1. Uh, that has no positive divisors other than 1 and the number itself. So 2 and 3 are prime numbers, but 4 is not, because 4 can be divided by 2. So that's what a prime number is. So you see a definition is quite long here, because you have to be very precise on what you exactly mean. That's what the definition is. Next one, theorem. A theorem is a statement connecting previous information. So connecting previous definitions or maybe axioms. And it has been proven based on previous statements. So although you have a very limited amount of definitions, theorems say something about the definitions. So you can make very, very many uh, theorems. I would recommend you not to learn theorems or proofs by heart, but understand how you get them from the definitions. So know the theorems and understand why they are true coming from the uh, definitions. An example of a theorem is there ex exists an infinite number of prime numbers. So you have no highest prime number. So the prime numbers are three 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and you can go on like this forever. That's a theorem. It says something about a previous definition. Then the last one, idea of what is a proof. 
proof is an argument for a mathematical statement. It tells you why the theorem is true. And what's important is that in a proof you can follow every step. You can say from every step whether it is true or not. It's just not, it's not, just not like I feel like it is true. We are in mathematics here. You can, it's not an opinion. You can really show, okay, this step is true and this one is not. That's a proof. So it's actually not too easy to give a proof because you have to be able to verify every single step. Well, we have a theorem over here. How would the proof look like? I just gave the idea, I didn't write out full proof. So how do we show that there's an infinite number of prime numbers? Well, the idea is, suppose uh, you have n prime numbers. So suppose there is a highest prime number, so you have n prime numbers. What you do then is that you multiply all prime numbers, so 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 times 11 times 13, up till this highest prime number Pn, which you have, and then you add 1. Then you have a new number, let's call it x. But if you divide x by P1, the remainder will be 1, because this one cancels out. If you divide x by P2, this cancels out, you have a remainder of 1. So if you divide x by any number, you will always have a remainder 1, which means that x is not divisible by any prime number, which means that x is a prime number itself, which is higher than all the other ones. So uh, that means that our assumption that we had the highest prime number is wrong, uh, so that uh, in fact we need to have an infinite number of prime numbers, which concludes uh, the proof in this case. So that's the idea of a proof, a few steps, and for every step you have to be able to verify that the step is correct. And okay, this is already quite a long proof, but often uh, you encounter exercises where you are asked to give some proofs which are usually very short, just to practice with this very precise reasoning. So, summarizing, axioms, probably obvious for you, definitions, learn them and study them very good, theorems, good to know, uh, don't learn theorems by heart, and proof, practice with proving uh, uh, assertions in the exercises.